Hello band, it's, uh, it's our second week of this time of making videos for y'all while you're at home and uh, I'm about ready to head on downstairs just and start doing my video. So let's go on down and see what's going on. Actually, my son has been here and he's been doing a little practicing too. So we're gonna go on in and see if we can Say hello to the kids. Hey everyone, how are you? So this is my son Matt, and he's he's here from uh, China. Actually, that's uh, I've told you he teaches there, and he's been staying here ever since the Corona outbreak. But uh, he's been getting some sax playing in, I guess, huh? Yeah, lots of time for practice. <laughs> so w when did you start playing the sax? I started playing the sax actually in this room in <laughs> fifth grade. So about I don't know, fifteen years ago or more. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's you, maybe twenty now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've been enjoying playing that for a long time. So, what is it you like about the sax? Um, one of my favorite things about the saxophone is just the sound that it makes when you play it, and just the feeling of the the metal vibrating and the just the tone of the saxophone, and then of course also just being able to play with other musicians and and make music together. Yeah, yeah, and so you have played with other people quite a bit. Yeah. What are, what are some of those fun performances and gigs that you've done? Uh, after college, I spent four months on on a cruise ship playing saxophone in the band there. So that was a really like fun way to travel around and see different parts of the world while playing music. Uh, and then also just different bands that I've had in, in college and, and afterwards having some, some regular gigs to play with the same musicians week after week and kind of develop a, a band. Mm -hmm. And so you also play other instruments besides the saxophone, don't you? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, uh, one of the first gigs was actually playing um, that yellow bass right there in a band, uh, the Fender yeah. Precision Bass. Yeah, we played together in an Elvis tribute band when I was in middle school and high school and then lots of other bands as well. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, so tell us a little bit about, uh, about practicing and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, obviously any instrument that you play practice is an important part of it. And, and the only way to get better is to practice. And sometimes practicing is a lot of fun and nobody needs to tell you to practice and you might spend just hours playing just cause you want to. And other times maybe you're not in the mood to practice but but just having that consistency of, of playing your instrument every day uh, is is the thing that you need to do to improve over time and just over years you'll see the progress yeah yeah and you have certainly made a lot of progress how about play uh, uh play one more thing it's just kind of cool on the saxophone <laughs> you guys so well that's matt and uh and you keep practicing and maybe you'll sound just like that or maybe you'll even play in a band with matt sometime <laughs> well all right say goodbye to matt all right take care guys so this is the video for the beginning band for the week of march 30th um I'd like to have you make sure you get your instrument and we'll start playing here let's do a warm-up we'll start with the key of the concert a uh, key of B flat and uh, add a little drum beat to it. We'll start with half notes. So here we go. One, two half notes. One, two, three, four. Back down. Arpeggio.
Now let's try quarter notes. One, two, ready, go. Arpeggio. All right. So last week, we started with a warm-up of a scale, and then we played page 12, Marianne and Polly Wally Doodle. Uh, we did several pieces on page 14, um, and then all of page 15. And I hope that you are able to play all those pieces. If not, feel free to go back and play last week's lesson video again and play along with those pieces, and that's just fine. But this week, we're gonna push on ahead Oh, we'll do one review. Let's do um, page 15. Let's do long, long ago. And then we'll jump into some uh, new music on page 16. So page 15, number 55, long, long ago. Long, long ago. <laughs> Turn in your book to page 16 and you'll see some new notes there. So for flute, your new note is a G. And the way you finger a G is just three fingers. And this is just like the recorder. If you remember your recorder fingerings, you have G, A, B. Well, here's G. And so that's what G should sound like for you. Then trumpet players, your new note is an A, and it's two fingers. Two fingers down, and you should have, it's pretty low. That's your note. And baritone, your note is a G also. Also like the flutes. And uh, your fingering is two. Sorry, I don't have a baritone here to show you, but it's two fingers for your low G. You gotta loosen it. You may be noticed when I played it on the trumpet, I hit the higher note first, but so you have to loosen it up a little bit to get that low G for baritone and the low uh, A for the trumpets. All right, so now take a look. I have to turn the page, but I don't think you do. Uh, still on page 16, let's uh, play along Sounds New, and we'll go straight into interesting intervals. Remember, an interval is the distance between two notes. And um, if they're the same note, they're unison. If, if the second note is just up one step, it's called a second. So like if, let's say your first note is on a line, your next note is on a space, that's a second or going the other way, line down to a space. Or it could be from a space up to a line, but just the next note, that's a second. If it goes line to line or space to space, that's a third. Um, and so anyway, interesting intervals are number 60. So we'll do 59, 60. And then I believe we'll also take a look at turn the volume up. And you'll see there they're showing you crescendo, which means get gradually louder. And decrescendo or diminuendo is get gradually quieter. All right, so let's do those pieces. Sounds new. <laughs>
Sounds new. Interesting intervals. Nobody's home. Don't forget to pay attention to the dynamics. It starts off forte. Ready, play. Quiet. Forte. So if you haven't done it already, go back to Interesting Intervals number 60 and write in the interval between the notes. So the first one's done for you. Uh, it's a second. The next one, look at that. And if it's the same note, you put unison. If it goes up one or down one, it's a second. If it goes up three notes, like from a B, C to a D, B to a D, that's a third, and so on and so forth. So write those in. Then, um, uh, on Hey Ho Nobody's Home, I hope you notice two things. One, it's in 2-4, so only two beats per measure, but then also there's forte and piano markings from loud to quiet in there. And then the next one, is turn up the volume, is going to again be uh, loud and quiet, but it gets gradually louder instead of just boom, all of a sudden louder, or boom, all of a sudden quieter. It gets gradually louder. That's called a crescendo, or gradually quieter is a decrescendo. So we'll do turn up the volume, or turn the volume up, and turn the volume down, those two, number 62 and number 63. Turn the volume up. Gradually louder here, now forte. Thank you. 
to turn to page 17, and on page 17, they're talking about tonguing notes and slurring notes. Tonguing notes is where you go to, 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 for instance. Slurring notes is done between two different notes where you don't re-tongue it, you just let, the, you change the note. So for instance, I keep the airflow going. This is tonguing. This is slurring. You can do the same thing on brass instruments, simply by continuing to blow and not re-tonguing the note by saying, I'm just keeping blowing the air and I change the note. So that's a slur. Now I'd like to talk to flute players for just a moment. You have learned your B flat so far was like this. Thumb, index finger of your left hand, and the index finger of your right hand. And that's a B flat. And that is true. But there's an easier way to play B flat, or another way to play B flat, and that is putting your thumb on that key instead of here, moving it up there, and you no longer need your index finger. This is really helpful on a song like Frere Jaca, page 17, because we're gonna go B flat to C. And instead of having to have that finger down and then taking both of them off, I'm just simply going to finger my new version of B flat and then take it off and I have a C. So listen. You see what I'm doing back here? go really fast where if you had to use that finger for your B flat it would be cumbersome and so try that new fingering for B flat well let's all play Frere Jaca remembering to slur anytime you have the line over the notes like that now also be aware if there's if that line curved line is over two notes that are identical it's called a tie slurs two different notes all right let's do Frere Jaca Frere Jaca. Two, three, four, one, two, three. There was a farmer had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh. All right, so why am I doing that song? Well, you notice in that song, Bingo, you don't begin singing on beat one. I began singing on beat four. I counted one, two, three. There was a farmer had a dog. And so some songs don't start right on the downbeat, and when they do. They might start on beat two, beat three, or beat four. Those are called pickup notes. And if I started, in this case, the next song, It's Get a Task, it begins on beat four. And then the second note of the piece is actually the downbeat of the first measure. So these are called pickup notes, and you'll see that explained um, right before I just Get a Task. It. And uh, let's see. Yeah, just it just says they occurred before the first complete measure of a phrase. And so let's do a tisket, a tasket, number 65. And uh, let's see what's coming up. Jasmine Flower ha is another piece that has a pickup. So we'll do those two pieces right now. Tisket, a tasket, number 65, and Jasmine Flower, number 66. A tisket, a tasket.
begins on beat four, two, three. Jasmine Flower. Begin on beat four, two, three. One, two, three. Of course, I've been asking you to send in your recordings, your video recordings of yourself playing your bead songs, and you can earn your beads. Um, some of you have already sent those in. That's great. And so I'd love to encourage you all to do this. What we're going to do right now is we're going to start on Go, uh, Go Tell Aunt Rody on page nine, and we're going to play through uh, several of your bead pieces just to kind of review through those. And if you can play them in the, with this video and on your own, Send a video of yourself doing it. Uh, you'll be glad. I'll be glad to have you earn that. So here we go. Back to go tell it. Uh, go tell Aunt Rody. Skip to my Lou and this old man. Get ready for those. Go tell Aunt Rody. <laughs> to skip to my Lou number 56 and we'll play that one twice skip to my Lou Skip the next one. This old man. Go to this old man. Ready, play. that some of you are really good about watching these videos and practicing. And so I want to say, if you've gotten this far in the video and you're still watching it, send me an email and tell me that you got this far and that you're actually practicing. The first one to send me an email, I'll send a little special treat in the mail to you. So if you want, send me an email and tell me you got this far and you saw the video. All right. Well, now back to the normal stuff. We've gone through today, we've gone through, we did a little review on page 15. 
We pay, played some new notes on page 16 and learned the slur and, uh, and page 17 also. So this week, practice 16 and 17. Go ahead and videotape yourself doing a bead and uh, piece and send that on to me. Hope you have a great week practicing. I'll talk to you next week.